warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello, welcome to our viewers at Home Market TV. Uh, this is Shukri Gutcher on another episode. And today we have a very interesting and informative uh, show about uh, global TESOL. And we have with us here the lovely um, professor, Jim Pellegrini. Welcome to Home Market TV, Jim. Thank you, good to be here. Thank you, good to have you. So please tell me about the Global TESOL College and, and the history of it and when it started. Sure, well we have been in operation since 1994. Uh, started basically with uh, Lauren Uramchuk out of Edmonton, Alberta, who had gone on a long trip into South America okay. and came to realize very quickly the need for the English language uh, to be properly taught. And so he became the first teacher of Global TESOL by appointing himself as the person in charge mm -hmm. and started teaching and had huge classes. And from that point on, we've uh, done a number of things internationally since 1994. We're now the largest uh, TESOL delivery training uh, organization in the world. Um, and just for your audience, T-E-S-O-L, which is the acronym for teaching English to speakers of other languages. So it is a certification program that we issue under Global TESOL College that basically trains people in the teaching of English internationally. So we've graduated about 60,000 students since that to day. To date, yeah. To date, yeah. Amazing. Since that day back in 1994, and we have offices in 16 countries, uh, 35 and counting regional directors, yes. and others that represent us in different parts of the world. That's amazing, uh, and I'm glad you mentioned what TESOL stands for because a lot of people wonder, uh, what are the other uh, certifications that somebody can get uh, with, the, with the Global TESOL College? Well, that's a really good question because there, there's a number of um, different types of TESOL certificates as well. Ours is basically that one, the International Advanced TESOL Certificate. So it is a blanket certificate that allows people to teach English, conversational English, mm -hmm. in most countries internationally, 90 countries to be exact, recognize our certification. So the ultimate certificate we have is the Advanced International, which is the 120 hour certificate. And that's made up of two other certificates. One is the foundation. So much like the foundation of a house, you begin with the first program, which is the introduction into pedagogy, techniques of teaching, techniques of maintaining classroom interest and management, all the things that teachers are supposed to know about how to manage a classroom and how to plan curriculum. And then the second certificate, they actually have a choice. We call them specializations. Universities call them electives. Mm -hmm. We have uh, 16 of them, and a student would choose one of those. It's included in the package. And these would be areas such as teaching children English or teaching business English, uh, teaching hospitality, tourism. So it's particularly focused to an area where people would love to work in and do that. So the three certificates together um, conclude with the Advanced International TESOL Certificate. Um, there are some others on the market, such as TEFL and TESL. They're not really designed for international, although some use them internationally. Ours is the one that's ideally created for teaching in any country in the world. The others are more for teaching within Canada or with teaching in the United States. That's, that's amazing. And how did uh, the college get the recognition worldwide over 90 countries? Right. So, like any other college, um, we have standards, we have a certain curriculum that's used and approved, um, but we don't have sort of a licensing organization that oversees any of TESOL. Mm -hmm. uh, so we came as close as we possibly could. We're registered with the Government of Canada. Yeah. So with HRDC, people who pay their fees to take the training have that as a tax deduction like any other tuition training. We don't charge HST, uh, just like any college or university. And I think for people that are shopping around, so to speak, yes. for TESOL certificates, there's, there's a minefield out there of quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. The challenge is that if it looks too good to be true, it probably is not true. I mean, you're getting certificates that are out there for $69 and $79 and $99. Yeah. But really, when you think about it, how effective is that in training someone to be certified as a teacher? Yeah. 
I think I should explain that we not only do the training, we also do job placement. Exactly. So as part of the job placement, the organizations that sign people to contracts have to follow their own local government yeah. requirements as to what a qualified teacher is all about. I'm glad you mentioned that, Jim, because uh, that brings me to my next question. Sure. How do you, what advice would you give somebody who's looking for a uh, certification? How do you avoid scams? Right. Because uh, I've seen the, uh, I don't want to mention a couple of the websites, yes. some of the offers that do look too good to be true. Yes. Or, yes. Well, we answer questions on that on that uh, aspect quite a bit. Um, so first of all, with us, it's being registered with the federal government of the country that we're initiating, and I think that's as close as you can get to a really amazing qualification. Um, the others is also to look at, say, um, who are they being, these other organizations, who are they in partnership with? Or who is doing a curriculum overview? So some of the things that we've done in addition to federal registration is we've partnered with different universities. So some of our training actually becomes a university credit course. And to get to that point, a university had to review our curriculum, our materials, the teaching material, look at our philosophy, our pedagogical approach, and say, yes, this is equivalent to what we train mm -hmm. at fourth year international education, for example, yeah. or how we would train someone to be able to deliver this curriculum in, in, in a particular country. So I think to look for that, like what other, besides looking at themselves in the mirror and saying, we're really good, yeah. <laughs> what other kind of accreditation or relationship do they have where there's an overview of their curriculum and an overview of their really style of approach? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what, how many countries do you normally do placements in? and which countries are more, they require more teachers? Yes, that's a great question. So right to mind, there's two parts of the world that seem to constantly need teachers. Uh, Asia is the first one. Uh, it, it, we just can never fill their requirements. Even now, we just received a contract where they're asking us for 600 teachers yes. in the next six months, 600 teachers. And then once we achieve that, then they're going to move to 1,000 teachers required. Yeah. So I think in that part of the world, 18 to 20,000 teachers are constantly required. Mm -hmm. The Middle East is another huge market because as you know, the Middle East and your audience knows, the Middle East is, is so spread out and has so many different areas. And so we have graduates currently teaching in Kuwait, in Qatar, in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, um, in a number of other centers where they're also looking for teachers on a regular basis and they're looking more for teachers for an entire school year, not for short term. Absolutely. And a lot of these jobs are, <coughs> are for full-time use because mm -hmm. Our teachers are there legally, so the local organization will work to getting them a visa to be able to work there legally, mm -hmm. and that's where the certification comes in. If the certification is not recognized, then they don't qualify on the basis of being able to get a reputable uh, working environment there. Absolutely. Hello, I am Mohamed Dolly. My team and I can assure you that you will be served with compassion, empathy, and respect in pursuit of your personal injury claims. We have obtained millions of dollars for our clients. You retain us, you will never be disappointed. For those who are looking for immigration lawyers, we have experience and passion to serve you. Contact Dolly of Dolly Law. Thank you.
amazing. Our viewers, that was a short break. Um, thank you for coming back. Uh, we're still in conversation with Jim, uh, the um, director of Global TESOL and also instructor that, that provides uh, Global TESOL uh, certification uh, courses. Uh, Jim, uh, can you please address the, uh, the countries that um, you do placements in? Sure. Yeah. So <clears throat> we were talking um, earlier about China as being one of the biggest ones, um, looking for thousands of teachers. And along with China comes that whole part of the world of the um, um, surrounding countries of Vietnam, of Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. And then the Middle East, of course, where we have people teaching in Kuwait, in Doha, in Qatar, in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, and in, and in um, Dubai. Um, and also teachers that are required in the Russian Federation. Uh, we have a large presence in the Russian Federation where we train regularly there, but now they're also looking for graduates. So pretty well 90 countries recognize our certificate, and I'm going to say, I would say probably a third of them are actively recruiting teachers that are looking for teachers to expand their programs. That's amazing. Um, it, Jim, could you also please tell us about uh, if there is a prerequisite that's required from, from Global TESOL for somebody when, if they're interested to start taking the course? Great. A good question. The prerequisites are, are simple but pretty direct. One is the ability, of course, to speak English, yes. um, which sounds really mundane, like why does it even say that? You would be surprised at how many people come to us that have ESL requirements. And we're not an ESL training college. Mm -hmm. We train ESL, but we don't train you to pass an ESL or a TOEFL or anything such as that. Yeah. So fluency, minimal accent, everyone has an accent, yes. whether it's regional or, or country accent, mm -hmm. but to minimize that. Um, and then the other requirement, of course, is some jobs require a degree in anything. Yes. Uh, many do not, mm -hmm. um, so specific to the country you want to go to, we would ask that question as well. Where is it that you see yourself ending up in? Yes. And if it's a country which requires a degree by law, well then we're going to say you either get a degree or you're not going to go to that country. Yes. Um, and, and then the other ability is basically what we consider to be able to pass an interview for a job. So a little bit of a personality. Um, a little bit that's that shows <laughs> very, <laughs> yeah. um, because you wouldn't want your children trained by someone that's very boring. Um, we've all had lots of those teachers. Yeah. And so we look for a little bit of that spark, a little bit of that personality. In our training, we certainly bring out a lot of things from people, but we can't get them to do what's not in there and maybe has never been done. Um, there is a lot of change that goes in the process. A lot of people reveal in the training experiences that they had in their lives that were perhaps difficult, such as mm -hmm. personal abuse or failure, what they classify as failures. And we do, we do a very powerful job of empowering them to do it. Basically, we want them to be able to do the same to the children they're teaching. Absolutely, empower those, those kids. Exactly. Um, and this is why I invited you to, to my show, Jim, because you have done that for me. I've experienced that through the, the days. Uh, of, of the course you going into it I had different expectations and then coming out I, I feel you know empowered and I feel I have the skills to teach to teach others well and, and on that note thank you for your your kindness on that but you're you're um, a, a wonderful person to begin with and so in many cases we meet so many people that are right on the edge of being extremely successful but they look in the mirror and they haven't told the person they look at in the mirror that they can do that. Yeah. And it's almost like that person in the mirror is the only thing standing in their way. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of that training where we say, you need to believe in yourself and the ability to do that. Yes. I don't care what anyone else has told you that you were a loser in your life mm -hmm. or you were too tall, too small, too fat, too thin, mm -hmm. that you're useless, you, you don't meet my standard. No one has the power or the moral um, right mm -hmm. to be able to judge someone in that way Absolutely. and so we speak very powerfully for those that are hurt mm -hmm. victimized in any way and say you don't have to be this way Absolutely. you don't have to stay that way yes that's amazing Jim this brings me to my next question I want you to share with our audience any memorable stories you had of students oh. or an experience I'm sure you have a lot <laughs> but an experience in a, in a particular any particular country um, 
I, what comes to mind is, well, a number of cases, so I'll, I'll just mention a few. Um, we all start as one class, everyone sort of looks the same, yeah. sounds the same, and then we begin to break that wall down and kind of remove that facade that says I've got to behave in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And so we ask certain questions that gets people to really reflect and think and share. And they're invited to do that. There's no pressure to doing so, but yes. people feel like they want to share. I remember one fella coming um, from Hamilton to a course I was teaching in St. Catharines, I think it was. And he was really down on his life, uh, hard on himself. He had just graduated from university. He had an entire $80 in his pocket. His father had committed suicide when he was younger. His mother struggled as a single mom and just couldn't keep going. And he said to me, without even knowing me, never meeting me, he said to me, this is kind of my last hope because I have a degree in philosophy. What good is that going to do in the world with a degree in philosophy? Not, not so much pressure on you. But. Right. And so my, my, my first reaction was, well, congratulations for completing your degree because it doesn't matter what the degree is in, everyone goes through similar struggles to get there, yeah. the expectations, I don't have to tell you, the demands, the, the pressure. And then secondly, I said, no one, no one gave them the authority to tell you what you should do with your life. And so we began the process and it was really interesting. We do, we have them do a teaching practicum at the end of the course and I partnered them up with someone else. And it happened, the girl that I partnered them with was visiting from South Korea. Mm -hmm. She happened to be almost at the opposite end of the spectrum. So she's married to a fellow who uh, works for Samsung. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to Beijing to do some training. And she said, good, I go to Canada and study English. And <laughs> she ends up in my class, a lovely girl, 24, 25 years old. I put the two of them together to teach. And she was very demanding. They taught the lesson in Korean. Mm -hmm. So he had to learn Korean words from her yes. enough to teach the lesson. And by the end of that, it was absolutely profound. His comments were amazing. We sent him to Shanghai. He had a bad first night. His computer blew up. He plugged it in the wrong circuit. Yes, of course. And of course. <laughs> and he locked himself out of the residence. We had to sleep on the street because he didn't want to wake up everybody saying, you know, I'm so dumb, I locked myself out. Mm -hmm. And from being in fear of teaching that first group of 30 children that were five years old, they were all over him. And he kept remembering our words, don't touch a child, yes. put your hands behind your back, you don't hug, you don't do anything, you don't give people an idea of any. He was frozen this way and kids were <laughs> leaning over yeah. and the principal said to him, go ahead, hug the kids. He goes, no, I can't, I'm the not training. allowed to. The training not, kicked yeah. in. And here he is now, I guess 11 years later, in the same job, he's married locally. He is now considered an expert on teaching children. And when we send teachers there, they have some of his training mm -hmm. as an introduction to how you teach locally in, in the Chinese culture. That's amazing. A complete transformation, Absolutely. right? Like, this is a complete huge transformation, like a life changing experience. Exactly. From taking a simple course to changing to changing his life. Well, this is yeah. this is what people don't always realize, Shukri, is it's not that simple of a course. It's really profound. And I remember uh, one girl writing at the end because they write reflections and she said, this is a course in self empowerment that masquerades itself as TESOL. It's TESOL. I thought That's that was really cool. It is, it is super cool. So, and she's absolutely onto something. So there's one yeah. example that yeah. really is, it was a profound change, but mm -hmm. I can say every time we do a course, there's always some that are very profoundly affected by it. That's, that's amazing. And um, after completing the course, yes. um, you do help out, the college helps out with job placement. Absolutely. Uh, not you, you're a busy man personally, but there, there are uh, ways that, you know, to help how to look at the contract so people don't run into um, bad contracts and all that. Yes, absolutely correct. We have a, a department headed up by one of my graduates who is um, a placement uh, recruiter and director. Mm -hmm. um, and there's another girl that does international. So between them, they review contracts with a person. So you'll, we'll get a contract from an organization. We've dealt with them for years, but to you, it's your first contract. So you're gonna look at this and you're not really sure. Yeah. So our staff will take you through that. 
and explain to you how it works. In the training itself, in the basic training, we actually go through an entire contract so you know what's involved with it. So everything from when you're paid to the holidays you have, to the medical insurance, all of which is included, mm -hmm. to all those key points that it's not so much always the teacher going over, but it's her mother and father and family yes, and everybody right. wondering, you know, are you going to such a strange place and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so we do that and we do a lot of recruitment advice. And then when they're in the job, we monitor as well in the first year. That's and, amazing. and oftentimes we then place them in the second job or the third job because they maintain contact with us. So it's not goodbye, the course is finished, exactly. never want to see you again. Mm -hmm. um, we maintain this and then years later, as you know, even in this last summer, we had a number of grads from four or five, six years ago that came back to do another training as regional directors. Yes. And so in that training now they can be instructors as well. So we do maintain a community, I think is how I'd like to say it. Yes, a it relationship is. there where they're feeling that it's not just a one-shot deal as in school. Mm -hmm. You graduate in school, we never see you again except yeah. once a year for alumni. This is more of an ongoing relationship we try to foster. Absolutely. This is a big family, the Global TESOL family. Correct. Um, do you advise somebody, like once they graduate, not to kind of sign their own contract or maybe get help look at, looking at it? Absolutely. Uh, you, any, any stories, horrible stories, some one of the graduates went through? Um, well, we see, we don't let them go into a contract unless we're convinced the contract yeah. is good. Mm -hmm. We've had horrible stories from people that got their own contract. Their own, yes. And it looked good, sounded good, and then when they got their things switched on them, and so then they called us for advice as to how to get out of the contract. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in another country, they can also blacklist you if you just dump your contract. Yes, of course. Uh, but there's ways we can get you out because we're fairly large. We can also say to an employer, look, um, this girl is not happy in the job. I can send you another teacher if you could just release her and then we could be able to, and they do that. Make, make they, a deal. So they sure, they yeah. make that kind of a deal. Because also they want teachers from us continuously. Absolutely. They just don't want the one and two, they want teachers forever. Yeah. So if we're not happy about something, we let them know. And I think this is what goes really far with making, um, enabling our graduates to feel very confident yes. that it's something that it's not just me going out there in the world, but yeah. I've got this organization behind me. Absolutely, and uh, that's very empowering. Jim, um, there are some uh, number of schools and number of countries, the demand is very high for Canadian teachers. Yes. Uh, can you please touch on that? Um, th there's a, a feeling in a number of countries that it's part of movies and part of Hollywood image, mm -hmm. that unless you are native teacher, like native Canadian, American, Australian, yeah. that you're not able to properly deliver English language. We have proven them wrong. We've had uh, we've opened training in Serbia, for example, uh, five years ago, and now I had 400 grads from there. We've also have courses in Ukraine, we have courses in Poland and the Russian Federation. But being Canadian citizen, passport, mm -hmm. PR, anything that shows Canadianity is very powerful in the world. They consider that as an expert teacher away from the politics that some think Americans have. Yes, <laughs> away, I'm being polite. Yes. Away from that sort of political <laughs> yes. thinking, we're not seen that way. Mm -hmm. And many look at the Canadian image as, is this the person I want in my class teaching my child? Um, they, they're quite happy to learn about Western culture, Western philosophy, but they don't want to feel that their child is going to be brainwashed. Absolutely. It, it's part of they the world. They want to the culture and all that. Yes. Exactly. And as you know, Canada is representative of many cultures. Absolutely. And so we grow up in a very immigrant-focused environment. I'm the son of immigrants that came from Italy many years ago, and yeah. many of people that I know came mm -hmm. from other countries as well. Yes. So this is part of our Canadian identity. And particularly in Asia, they welcome that. And interestingly enough, in Dubai, mm -hmm. it was very welcome because, as you know, Dubai has many yes. tourist it's visitors. Been very, yeah. very. Yeah. So as a Canadian or American, but more Canadian, you're very fortunate to be able to have these opportunities uh, just on the basis of your passport. So you, you ride with whatever wind is beneath the sails. Yes, absolutely. Right. That's amazing, Jim. Um, I want to touch down on Saudi Arabia in particular. Sure. Uh, give me a number of how many graduates and uh, are majority women or men? 
the, um, that got placements in Saudi Arabia? Um, the majority, I was going to say for a long time, the majority were women. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen an influx of men in the last three, four years. Um, but I would say probably now 60, 40, 60% 60 women still, 40% men. It's just the way it flows. It's just the way people apply. Not everyone wants to go to Saudi Arabia that technically is qualified. Yes. And the ones that do repeat their contract. So they like it. Yes. They're earning really good money. They like the lifestyle. Mm -hmm and they're feeling valued and appreciated. And I know two were in one of the trainings I did this summer who had been teaching there and absolutely love it and were w willing to go back again this September yeah. to do another contract renewal. That's amazing. One of my friends graduated from Global TESOL and she teaches in Princess Nora's University. Yes. Extremely happy for the past four years and she's looking forward to renewing her contract. And that university has hired I'm not going to say hundreds, but it feels like it. Yes. Dozens of teachers. It's a huge university. Absolutely. And their focus is really on quality English instruction. Yes, that's amazing. Uh, Jim, any uh, exciting announcements are coming up? Uh, a couple of things interesting. Um, one of the contracts which uh, a company has approached us, or actually an agency out of uh, China, um, is offering tuition for people that are Canadian or American, like native, mm -hmm. um, that want to go and teach for one year there, so your TESOL tuition is paid for. Um, that's amazing. And that's free tuition. Yeah. And you still get the certificate that's valid for a year, uh, valid for life, for rather. lifetime. Yeah. Lifetime certification. Um, and the contracts are for a year. That's why I got that confused. Yeah. So one year contract, and then you can go wherever you want, mm -hmm. and you have the certification that basically they've paid for. Um, now there's also some discussions we've had recently in the Caribbean. Uh, we're running an international camp in Canada starting next summer, and one of the universities in the Caribbean has asked us if we would run one of their camps there and in Belize. So it's really excitement because we would go to our own graduates first yeah. and say, would you like to be able to work in this or, you know, seeing if they're coming back for a while in the summer to be able to be a part of it. Yeah. So that's really exciting for us. We're moving more like everything else in our lives. We're, we're staying not stagnant, but we're looking for new opportunities and new kinds of um, situations where our graduates will be able to maximize their training in other areas. We have mm -hmm. Ontario teachers, for example, been teaching yes. for a long time. Mm -hmm. They're now invited to teach in special sessions in the summer, professional development in different parts. So they're, they're off for two months in the mm -hmm. summer. They're there working, they're teaching. I wouldn't say too much work at three hours a day. Not, not so much work. Yeah. Nice contract, get to see the country for free, basically, mm -hmm. round trip ticket. Yes. And, I, and I should tell your, your viewers that um, most contracts that they will sign include round trip transportation being paid, mm -hmm. so the airline ticket. Yes. Then the contract which guarantees the pay that's in the contract every month, paid on the same day every month. Mm -hmm. The tax rate is usually minimal, so 8 to 10 percent in that country yes. is deducted at source. Mm -hmm. Vacation paid, minimum 20 days vacation, especially in Asia, mm -hmm. up to 30 days. Emergency leave if they have to leave the country mm -hmm. for someone in their family isn't well and they have to come back. They're paid for six days plus extra leave time. Medical insurance, Medical insurance. also mandatory and required. And opportunities for renewal of contract. That's amazing. So it's not like at the end of the contract they're saying, now where do I go? Their school will beg them to stay and yes. make them an offer they can't refuse. But sometimes they do refuse it because they want to look at other Other things. opportunities yes. and, and gain experience that way. Exactly. Some people choose to travel to other countries sometimes yes. and, yes. and want to continue that experience of travel, yes. teaching, and um, basically being cultured and, and learning. And, and so on that note of travel, we always associate travel with young people because they're you know, looking for new things and so on. But a lot of our contracts also allow for spouses to go and also for families to go. That's so amazing. I know in the Middle East they will pay up to four airline tickets for one teacher to go, assuming you might have one or two children yes. or have you know, your spouse that wants to go with you. Sometimes the spouse will also train so they're both teaching they're English. They both can teach in English. Yes. That, that's amazing. Yes. And still one apartment, yes. but they're getting, oh yeah, and the free apartment. I forgot to mention yeah, that. Living a lot living of a, Living a free apartment, private apartment for a year. Yes. And that's with Western style toilet in, in, <laughs> in a central area 
um, yeah. all of those things that have to make it very comfortable for someone to come home at the end of the day and feel that they can re-energize for the following day. Absolutely, that's all exciting. Jim, any last messages you want to tell our audience, somebody who's thinking about uh, signing up to, um, to learn this course and get the certifications? I, I find that people have fear, a lot of fear, mm -hmm. of being able to take a new venture and they rely a lot on what other people say to them. And oftentimes the people who will tell them to be careful, don't do it, it's risky, I read about this in the paper, I read about that, haven't been there themselves. And, you know, because what I used to hear, well, this person said China's terrible, they do this, they do that, and I'll say, that person who told you that, when was the last time they were in China? Mm -hmm. Oh, they've never been never. there. Well, yeah. right? So it's the same thing in Western media sometimes, I don't have to tell you this, mm -hmm. Western media portrays certain things in a certain way, and when you get there, you realize it's so different. Mm -hmm. So what we do to ease your concern is we have you talk to our grads who are there now. So we'll connect you with somebody who's there. They're not gonna to lie to you. They're not there to benefit us, they're there to benefit themselves. Yes. And they basically would say to you, take the chance, take the risk. I was where you are now. I was in that fear position. Yes. I was afraid of myself, I was afraid to make a decision. So I'll say take a risk, take a chance, because the risk is minimalized. And it's minimized because of all the support that goes there with it and the fact that it's not just you doing it alone, it's us as an organization and others that we work with that are there to support you. So take that chance, call Shukri and make it happen. Absolutely, thank you so much, Jim. Right. I appreciate Pleasure. your time. Uh, our viewers, uh, I hope that was an informative session about Global TESOL, uh, or TESOL, however you want to pronounce it. Um, Please do not hesitate to contact us at Home Market TV. In particular, contact, uh, you can send me an email at shukriya at, at globaltussle.com. That's S-H-U-K-R-I-A at globaltussle.com. Go to the website. Uh, this is a highly recognized school. Over 90 countries uh, job placement and is a great opportunity. Thank you so much for watching. Jim, I appreciate your time. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, have a wonderful day.